Okay, guys. So I'm just about ready to go. I'm just going to give it a couple more seconds, just let some people, last few people coming in the room. Um, if you've got any questions or anything like that, just type them into the chat box, if possible, because that's the box I'll be watching, basically. So there's a Q&A and a chat. I'll be watching the chat box. So if you type your questions into there, then that would be the simplest way to do it, to make sure that everything gets covered. The other thing to say is that we'll be doing a Q&A at the end. Um, so if you've got any questions, try and save them till the end, because I won't be stopping to answer questions in the middle, because it's, it's just just go through the presentation, and at the end, you can ask any questions that you feel that you need. Um, so let me just um, share my screen. Well, we're going to look. We're going to look into this. Let me just get my screen share going. Okay, so you should be able to see that now. Can somebody just confirm that they can, that the screen sharing, okay, you can see, it should be a, just a simple PowerPoint presentation for the time being. Okay, cool, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so what we'll be doing, don't worry, it's not going to all be PowerPoint presentation because I, I don't like that myself, so I'll try to limit it as much as I can. Um, we're going to be looking at my trading account, we're going to be looking at um, the browser and stuff like that, so there's, we'll try and mix it up a little bit. And also, the, web, the presentation is not going to be too long, because there's no need for me to, to drag it out. Um, I want to leave a maximum time for, for questions at the end um, there, so you know, it's probably not going to be as long as you anticipate. So let's take a look at, um, this is an overview of what we're going to be looking at today. Of course, the topic is how to trade the news. Um, now, to do that, we need to go through a few things. First one is about me, so who I am. Basically, that's just kind of explaining why I'm qualified to teach people how to trade the news. Um, you know, what makes me um, a successful trader. So we're going we're gonna to talk about that first of all. Then we're going to go through common news trading myths, because I'm sure a lot of people in here today have tried to trade the news or they've maybe bought some kind of news trading course or they've been involved in some way or they are aware of on some level the concept of news trading. So there's a lot of myths to go to go over. Which again you've probably encountered if you've been if you've you know been doing it for a little while. The the, the third thing there is how professional traders approach the news. That's the main thing. We're going to be looking at then we're going to go into a trade example. So we're going to go into my trading account, we're going to pick out a trade that I took this month uh, in March. March the 12th, um, a news trade, and we're going to go through it step by step, and then we're going to back analyze it using the rules that we outline. And that brings us to the next point, because we are going to give you a step by step guide for trading the news. So it's not just going to be uh, a complicated presentation. You're going you're to have very uh, firm steps or rules, three of them in fact, that you can then apply after today. You can actually apply it and go away and trade the news. Um, and, of course, at the end, we'll have a Q&A session. So any questions that you've got, please reserve them till the end. Write them down and then type them in at the end when we're doing the Q&A session uh, so it's not confusing for everybody. So, about me. Who am I? Okay, so just a few points there that you can see. Um, I'm head of FX, uh, uh, an investment company called Smile Global Management. We are based in London. Um, Smile is focuses on managed accounts, okay? So SCA regulated, and we are regulated to manage finance money and, of course, trade their money in the FX markets. We're part of a, a larger organization called Independent Portfolio Managers, uh, and as, a, as, a, as a, a structure overall, we manage around about $250 million worth of investment. Um, Smile is a trading arm of IPM, and we focus solely, IPM invests in all sorts, they've got all sorts of funds and stuff going on. Smile focus particularly on managed accounts. And we, we, we do we do FX and we do equity. And obviously I'm head of FX there at Smart. Now, my personal background is that I've been a professional trader since 2008. Uh, that record is verified, okay? That's uh, audited and um, verified by multiple sources. So it's not just me saying, oh, you know, I can trade. It's been checked and verified year by year. 
so from, including 2008, so about six years now, track record, um, which of course is independently audited. Now that leads us on to the third point. Um, one of the sources that check and verify and rank my performance are the Barclays uh, Currency Trading Index. They ranked me the second best performance trader in the world between 2008 and 2013 based on performance uh, over those years. So it wasn't all the best every year, it was just an overall view. And of course, it was only ranked out of the, you know, the funds and the, and the, the managers that are being ranked, obviously. It's not, it's not incorporating every trader in the entire world. Um, and of course, finally, I'll train, I've also got a training course that I run at my website, jarrettdavis.com. So if you're interested in, in learning from me, if you're interested in taking that course, this presentation is a very good insight. It's a, it's a superb insight into how we trade. Okay? Is anyone else having problems with the sound, first of all? Because there's a... I can notice a few people having, well, one person having problems with the sound. Okay. Is it, it's clear and it's, 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 it's acceptable. You can hear it, basically. Okay, fine. It, it seems okay. Okay, it seems fine. So, this, anyway, this gives us, this is going to give you a very, very good insight into how I trade. Okay, you will basically know all you, you need to know about how I trade after this presentation. So, let's go on to, um, the next point, which is of course common news trading myths. We'll get this out of the way before we go into the real uh, meat of the presentation. And I'm sure you guys have um, come across some of this. First of all, you've got two groups of people. You've got the people that don't trade news and you people that do trade news or try and trade news. The first group uh, treat it as something to be scared of, something to fear. So you'll hear things like the news should be avoided. If there's a red impact number or a high impact number, you should just stay out of the market, close your positions in good time. You know, don't be in the market when that news announcement comes out. Um, because all of these, you know, the second point here, all of these red impact events are equally volatile. Okay? Each and every event could possibly move the market 200 pips. And the final one, the reason really, and this actually applies to both camps, is that the news is unpredictable and high risk. Okay, don't be in the market when the news is happening because it's, you never know what's going to happen. Very high risk, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The second camp are those that do try and trade the news, and if you can see that the, bo the bottom two points there, those are the guys tend to focus on blind strategies, um, and you probably come across stuff like that: the straddle trade where you place a, an order at the top and an order at the bottom, and then whichever way the market booms you will hopefully get taken into your trade and make some pips. Um, unfortunately, it's not as simple as that, and it's very difficult to make a consistent profit trading like that. You've also got breakout traders doing very similar things. Um, but effectively, the point is that they're trading blind. They don't really know what they're doing. They don't really know which way the market's going to move, um, etc. cetera. Um, you've, the second group, these are, these are a little bit more sophisticated. You've got catching spikes. So... Again, you might have come across this. Basically, complicated software. You input the information, you know, the deviation, etc. And what you're looking to do with, with spike trading is get into the market milliseconds after the release. So it's automated, of course. And you're trying to ride that initial spike. You're trying to get as much of that initial spike as you can. Unfortunately, the problem with that is you're competing with um, the rest of the market institutions. There's a lot of algos doing that. Um, and they've got much better connections you know, bank feeds and stuff like that, and, and, and most of them actually have the news being released much earlier to them. So, for example, Reuters platform, the Reuters platform, which is quite high cost, uh, institutional traders have, they have access to about, you know, they get the news about two seconds before anyone else as part of the package of being a Reuters customer. Just an example. Okay, so retail traders have got no chance of basically trading the news in that way. It's very difficult. And on top of that, you've got broker spreads widening, slippage. And again, if you've been involved in that, I'm sure you're very, very conversant with those problems. Okay? So, what are we saying? Well, we're saying that those things are myths. News trading is profitable. You can predict the news. We're going to show you how you can know which way the price is going to go before the news comes out. Okay? We're going to show you how the process is very simple, just a three-step process to doing that. It just takes time, 
practice and experience. Of course, it's not just something you can walk into, but it is something that's fairly simple. Once you've mastered the process, you'll be able to achieve consistent profits from trading these key news events. Okay? So it's the idea of being able to predict, first of all, which news events to trade, then which currencies you're going to trade on that news event, and which direction that currency is going to move, and also when to get in. You'll be getting in before the, the news event even takes place. So we're not trying to catch the spike. We're not trying to, you know, get in after the event. We're going to be getting in long before the event comes out because we know which way the price is going to move. And it sounds a bit too good to be true, but I'll show you evidence in a moment that it is possible and, and, and evidence that I do it myself. And all the members in my service, we're all doing it every month, okay? So what we're going to do to show you that is we're going to go through a trade example on the New Zealand dollar because this is a trade I took. This is one of the most recent news trades that I took in fact. Uh, we're going to go to my account. We're going to look at the trade. We're going to show you exactly, go to the chart, see how it plays out. Then we're going to go through the step-by-step -step rules, the three-step rules that you need to, so you might want to write these down when they come up. And then, of course, what we're going to do after that is we're going to go back over the trade once you've got those rules, and we're going to break the trade down as per those rules. So you can see each step applied to the trade, so you can basically um, replicate yourself. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change what I'm sharing here to my trading account. So you should be able to see my trading account. If you can't see my charts, then let me know. But if you should be able to see it, so that's fine. Now, what we're going to do, first of all, this is the New Zealand dollar we're looking at. I'm going to go into my history here. Um, so you can see it all there for you to see. Okay. Now, this is the account, obviously. There we go. There's the trade. Now, the trade I've highlighted at the top is the New Zealand dollar trade. Okay, you can see that there. And I'm just going to talk you through it because it's very important that you see the details of this trade before we go any further. The first thing you need to notice is the time, the date I've got in. I've got in on the 10th of March, 2014, in the morning, first thing. The trade was scheduled for the 12th, and we're going to look on the calendar in a moment. Of course, the next big thing to realize is the New Zealand dollar, very important to realize. Um, then, of course, the price that I got in at, April 72. Then the time that I got out on the 13th of March. So I was holding this trade for three days, but I was holding it for those three days for a very, very specific reason. Okay? And if we just close that a second and just go to the chart, you can see this is the 10th of March here, and there's the price that I got in at there. So you can see the price has been moving up, and we knew it was going up. I've been trading this thing up all, the whole time. And you'll notice I've got an order on, I've got an actual trade on right now. Just ignore that. That's nothing to do with what we're talking about here. Um, we got in here just in this range. Price started ranging, settling down, waiting for this key news event that we were going to trade. So we got in long. We bought it. Okay, that's the other thing you need to bear in mind. We were buying the New Zealand dollar against the US dollar from here. So let's have a look at why and you know how we basically came to this conclusion. So I'm just going to change what I'm sharing to the to the internet. And now you should be able to see uh, Bloomberg. We've got Bloomberg up, okay? Now, Bloomberg is our first tool. It's a very simple tool. It's free. It's a, this, the, the beauty of this as well is all the resources that you need are free, freely available. So the first thing is Bloomberg. You can see the link there, bloomberg.com slash news slash currency. It's the, the currency news that we're looking at. And if you just look here, as we scroll down, you can see the headlines uh, and the different articles that are going on. So it's this first step, and don't worry, we'll come back and go over the step in a bit more, a little clearer after this. Each, the first step is to absorb the sentiment and figure out what currency pair we're trading, which direction, uh, and why. And the news gives you that. Okay? Very simple. Now, what I'm going to quickly do is just go for the New Zealand dollar example, just kind of search here for some old news so we can illustrate this happening. Okay? Now, if we scroll down to um, the 27th of February 
Yeah. We just click on this link. Of course, remember, we took the trade on the 10th of March, okay? And the trade was to the 12th of March. And this article was written before then, the 27th of February. Now, these articles have been written since September 2013. So we knew plenty of time what was going to happen. But what I want to do is just scroll down. Let's get rid of those little pop-ups. Scroll down here. So this is one paragraph, because this basically sums it all up. And again, we'll go back over later on and explain it all. You can see this one paragraph, the market for certain that the RBNZ Governor Graham Wheeler will raise the official cash rate from 2.4% on March the 13th. Okay? There's an 89% chance of a quarter point increase. Okay? That gives us all the information we need, just that one little paragraph. But if you read this whole article, you get more, you know, there's more information there. Okay? Um, the, the next paragraph is also very uh, good. In fact, the last line. Just this is an analyst from ANZ Bank. Okay, we envisage 75 basis points of pipes over the first half of 2014, starting in March. So now, we've got a very clear idea, this is in February, we've got a very clear idea that we want to be trading the New Zealand dollar, we want to be trading it long, because they're going to hike rates, so when interest rates go up, the value of the front goes up, and we want to do it around the March the 13th, basically, because that's when the, the next rate decision is. So now let's go and look at the calendar. And if I just scroll up, you can see this is the Wednesday, the March 12th. This is March 12th calendar. And if we scroll down slowly, just at the bottom here, you can see these are red impacts. This is a red impact event here. This is the RBNZ rate decision. This is the rate decision we've been reading about in the news all those months. We've been waiting for this day. Okay. Now, remember, look at the forecast. The previous was 2.5%. That was the existing one. They forecast it to go up to 2.75%. Everyone was very, very convinced, very, very certain. It was like almost, well, almost 90% guaranteed that they were going to raise rates, okay, at this meeting, the March meeting. Now, the next most important thing, of course, is the policy statement, because what the central bank members say also moves the market. And just after they've raised interest rates, it's very unlikely they're going to say anything dovish, of course, because they've, they've just like, raised interest rates. So why are they going to be dovish? That doesn't make any sense. It's never going to happen. So you can see that we're very, very confident now. We've built a picture that we're very confident that the New Zealand dollar is, is a buy on the 12th of March. So now let's go back to the chart. And if you can't see the chart, please just let me know. But you should have, you should have, you should have scrolled back. So, how do we trade it? Well, if we know that the New Zealand dollar is going to go up, on the 13th of March, is a very high probability of that happening, then we want to be in the market even before the event comes out. We want to be in the market at the best price possible. The perfect price is down here. We should have been getting in the end of Feb, okay, which we were doing. We were buying this and taking profits in September. But March, new trade, comes up the week of the RBNZ. I got into the market a couple of days before because I, wanted, I don't want to miss any move up. And you can see the, the thing ranged here. And then the announcement came out here. You can see the spike. Now, bear in mind, we're not trying to catch this spike. We're not worrying about getting in and within milliseconds or anything like that. We're already in. We already know what's going on. And we can ride it up. Okay? And up it goes. And we knew this was going to happen. That's how you trade the news. So you pick your key events and you take your trade. And, of course, we took out... I had my trade on it's just at 86. If we go back to the actual trade... Um, you can see the trade here. The price is 84.74. My take profit was at about eight, just before 86, 85.95. I took it off just a little bit before because it was hesitating. You know, it's about 150 pips, just left, maybe 140 pips, something like that. Um, it's still a very nice trade, uh, considering, you know, it wasn't really very stressful. We got in, we knew what we were doing, we just waited. And then the market came out, up it went, and we took our profits. Yeah, on this initial spike up. Okay. So, that's how you trade the news. Now, let's go back, look at the rules, and then we'll go back over what we've just looked at so we can get a bit, a bit of a clearer picture. Here's a step-by-step -step guide. So, if, you, if, you, if you're interested in trading this way, you should write this down. First step is you need to read the news to absorb the sentiment. Very simple. You don't have to have any fancy equipment. You don't need a Bloomberg kernel. 
Bloomberg, the free Bloomberg currency news. That's all you need. I do use premium news services. Okay, I do pay quite a lot of money for that, but you don't need to. That's what I'm saying. You can just read the news, absorb the sentiment, figure out what's going on. Now, when you're reading the news, these are the four things in red are the four things you need to be paying attention to. If these four things, if these four things don't exist, if they're not in the article, then it's not a trade. Okay? And if anyone's having problems with the sound, please let me know. I think at the moment it's only one or two people, so it's, it's, it's something, maybe not, maybe not, nothing, nothing in our end. Um, so the four things you need. First of all, which currency? That makes sense. Which currency are you going to trade? Secondly, the direction. Is it going to go up or down? Thirdly, the reasons. That's a key. You need reasons why. Because very often an article will say, oh, you know, the dollar yen went up today, blah, 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 blah. And if there's no solid reason for why it's going up, then you get them blind. You don't just get in and buy it for no reason. It has to be a very good reason. Fourthly, market expectations. Okay? So what, which, what are the analysts, what are the traders expecting from this event? Okay? Because very often people at Bloomberg and news services will interview professional traders, institutional traders at banks, etc. So basically, these guys will give their opinion. They'll tell you what they're expecting from the market. And that's what we build our picture with. Once we've got an idea of what we're expecting, okay, we then highlight where these news events happen. So just like we'll go back over the New Zealand dollar in a moment, we highlight the, the news events that we're expecting to be key for moving the markets. So then we know which way they're going to move. We know which way these news events are going to push the market. Okay? And then finally, step three, very simple. We place trade in the appropriate currency in the correct direction. Very simple. Okay? So what I'm going to do now is go back over that trade and we're going to apply those rules as we go through. So let's, go, let's, have, let's take a look. So this article here, what have we got from this article? Well, if you go for the headlines, you don't need the headlines first of all. New Zealand, so you know it's the New Zealand dollar. Okay? It's the first paragraph they'll raise rates in two weeks. So we know, okay, so we know that they're going to raise rates. That means buy the currency. So first of all, there's the, two, the first two things done. We know it's the New Zealand dollar. We know we want to buy it. Then if we read the article, I'll just scroll down. Sorry about that. Okay, we come back to this paragraph. What, what information does this give us? It tells us the reason. The reason we're buying is, of course, because of interest rate hikes. Okay, that's a clear reason. Very good reason. Interest rate trades are about the easiest trade you'll ever get in Forex. Okay? There's your reason. The final thing is the analyst expectation. So this, is, this puts the meat on the bones. It gives us the details of what to expect and when. And of course you can say um, there's an 89% chance of them doing it. And then you've got analysts here. Um, this, this analyst comment here tells us it fills in the gaps. The OCR needs to move up soon. Okay? We envisage 75 basis points of over the first half of 2014, starting in March. And as you read more and more news articles and, and you get at least two or three confirming the same picture, then it gives you a very good, very high probability news trade. And you then you, all you need to do then is make sure you're in the market before that event. Of course, use a stop. If we go back, if we go back to my um, the trade, I had a stop loss in. Okay. I actually moved the stop loss to break even after the trade moved, but I had a stop loss in. You can have the stop loss 200 pips away, it doesn't matter, because the probability is so high, you're going to lose very, very rarely when you get this right. Okay? And that's it. That's how you trade the news. Now, obviously I said that's it. it's only been about 25, 30 minute presentation. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take some time to um, go through some questions and answers. So if you guys have got some questions and answers about that, or questions about that method, about the, how, how we do it, please let me know. Um, but that's how you trade the news. Now, there's a few people requesting the PowerPoint presentation. Um, we can arrange, I'm sure, I don't know, I'm not sure 
maybe the host can ha help me with this, but I'm sure we can arrange some kind of... Well, the webinar will be recorded anyway. That's clear. Okay, Jeremy, some people say it's better to trade the news on the five-minute chart. What's your take on that? It doesn't matter. When I got into this trade over here, this is a, this is a one-hour chart, but it doesn't really matter what... It doesn't really matter what time frame. If we go down to the 15-minute chart, uh, you know, the, it doesn't matter. I'm looking to do, all I care about is that I'm getting in before March the 12th. That's all I care about, basically. So it doesn't really matter what time frame. I'm not looking at a technical setup. I just want to be in the market waiting for that spike. Okay? So I don't trade any particular time frame. Uh, the most important events to trade, the most important news events to trade in the Forex are the news events that the market's focused on. Okay? So, for example, on the, the Euro, from around November, if you look at the Euro, it was very, in, from, from November to February, the inflation was very important. Right? So any time inflation figures came out, the market was paying very close attention and trading off them. So, you need to figure out what news is important to which currency at a given time because it changes. So, for example, GDP in the Eurozone is not really a big deal. Even it might be a red event on the calendar, no, you know, the market's not paying any attention to it. So you need to read the news and find out what particular news events the market's paying attention to, just following those simple steps, because it changes all the time. Uh, the question about my broker, what broker do I use? Any particular reason? I use a broker called Valby Capital, based in London. They're based in the UK. Um, the reason I use them is because this is where all our clients are counting for help. Um, so obviously, it, you know, a client coming on, um, it's better, it, I like to say to the client that I trade my own money. So every time I, I, I lose or make a dollar for them, I'm losing or making a dollar for myself. So this account is obviously attached to all the client account. Um, it just makes sense to us all to trade at the same broker, basically. That's why. Uh, it's a good, it's, I'm happy with the broker, it's fine. Uh, Steve, that was a very high profile event. What about lower events? Well, Basically, Steve, you get probably maybe maybe two or three, maybe three or four of these type of events a month across different currencies. In fact, if we just uh, go back into the, my, my trades here, this Aussie trade here that I've highlighted, that was also a news trade. Okay? That was also a news trade. Um, that was the employment figure. Um, of course, it's, there's a lot of, you know, in order to be able to understand each currency, which way it's moving, etc., it's going to take a lot more than a 30-minute presentation to, to go over that. But this just gives you a taste of what we're doing um, in the service, really. Um, but, you, you know, you can take this away and make pits of it. So, Steve, all I'll say is if you're going to just use this presentation as your guide, just focus on the high-profile events. You can trade the lower-risk events by all means. You can do that. But for that, you need to know the background of each currency, you need to know the, the fundamental bias of each currency before you look at the events, basically. Um, so, for example, the Aussie dollar is bullish at the moment. Okay, we're bullish on the Aussie dollar, and we have been since the beginning of February. The back end of 2013, we were very bearish. We were selling it. The start of February, that changed. So, since that change to bullish, if you get a news event that comes out negative for the Aussie, we don't pay any attention to that. Okay, we only focus on the news events that are really good, that beat expectations to the upside, because the market's looking for excuses to buy. That's a, that's a, that gives you a general guide to. Okay, that's how you, that's how you trade smaller events. Um, Dalesh, how many days before the news should be going to the market? It's up to you. You want to get the best price possible. If you look at this chart here, you know I should, you know, I wish I'd have got in a week before. Sometimes the market will move against you if you get in too early. Um, there's a good guide, maybe an hour or two be before the announcement, a good guide. Okay, you're not going to go far wrong getting in an hour or two before. But if you, you know, if you've got the confidence and you've got the understanding, sometimes I'll get in a week or two weeks before leading up to it. Um, but, you know, there is a risk the market could move against you and you end up having a worse price than if you'd have just waited a couple of hours. Thomas, is this a test break test level? Um, you could use it like that. Do you, you mean as in support until so the price comes up and then falls back down to retest it? Is that what you mean, Thomas? I'm not sure. Uh, Mason, how long will the news affect the price? Well, it depends on the news again. It depends what it is. If it's a smaller announcement, it will only affect it for a few hours. 
and possibly the session after. So if something happens in Asia, this is another strategy that we use in the room. If something happens in Asia, and this is another trade I take all the time, if something happens in the Asian session, in the London session, very often the London traders will react to it and the price will keep flowing. So look at the best charts for them. Yesterday, the Federal Reserve um, issued forward guidance. They changed their forward guidance and talked about increasing rates sooner than everyone expected. And the dollar strengthened last night, really strengthened. And that carried on through the London session. Because that happened last night, UK time, so the London session didn't have time to react to it. They opened up London time and the London traders, you know, get in on that as well. So generally, a few hours to a few days. Uh, interest rate hikes will last months. It will keep going for months. But generally, there's plenty of time to get in. Um, okay, good question. Is this strategy, would you trade the FOMC yesterday since the general consensus? I did, in fact. Let me show you. I did take this check this yesterday. This trade here, dollar CAD, there. Uh, again, look at the time. Uh, it was the 19th yesterday, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, so about maybe two or three hours before the FMC. I bought dollar CAD because I thought they were going to keep tapering. Sure enough, up it went. Made tips. There you go. So I did, yes, is answer the question. <laughs> um, okay, yes, they dropped euro dollar. Yeah, again, the euro drop, was a, there was a clue there. The, I mean, the euro is a bit of a tricky one to trade at the moment. Um, uh, because I'm actually long the euro, but the euro is a tricky one to trade because there's a lot of stuff going on from a fundamental perspective. But, yes, you could have easily traded short with the euro um, for dollar strength. But the way I trade, I will be looking for dollar strength against weaker currencies, so Canadian dollar, if that makes sense. So I'm looking to buy dollar CAD because the Canadian dollar is so weak. Or dollar yen. Because, um, well, I, in fact I am, if you look at this trade here. I'm actually in a long position on dollar yen. Because I'm buying dollars against a weak currency. Euro is a bit of a tricky one. I'll, well, you know, it's a bit, bit of a complicated one at the moment. Uh, no, FX Boyke, no. I don't only trade the news, I trade the market. So, I trade the fundamentals. But So, for example, here's an example of... Um, uh, how to trade the fundamentals. So, for example, pound, let's use the pound yen as an example. Look at this chart. chart. This is one of the, another little strategy I use. We've got that level in there. Let's just say, for example, I'm bullish on the pound, I'm buying the pound, which I am, and we get a nice rally. I've got like a buying zone in here. You've got another buying zone down here. Basically, a buying zone is where the market came down and then got bought back up. Nice, obvious place on the screen points. Well, if I'm bullish the pound, and the market moves down for no apparent reason, then there's nothing's changed. The market will buy it back eventually because there's a fundamental change. So then I'll I'll just be buying it back technically, in in the way that in the way they overline fundamental. So I don't just trade the news at all. That's just one of my strategies. Um, I'm trading the fundamentals then. Um, quarter, quarter, month on month, which is important. Uh, good question. The answer to the question is. Um, they're, they're both equally as important as each other. And again, you need to figure out what the market's focusing on, basically. That will help you understand. Uh, Thomas, risk or reward? No, I'm not really interested in that. I'm not interested in, like, you know, having a three to one or anything like that. Um, don't use leverage. Don't take leverage. Uh, don't use stops. Well, I use very, very wide stops. Like, I'll put a couple of hundred pips in as a stop. Because, very, you know, if you look at the, let's just go to my, um, well, let's just, let's just look at the last three months to give you an idea. If we scroll down the last three months of, of trading, okay, just look how many times I lose. How many times in a row I'm actually losing. Because um, I've got high conviction, because I'm trading the fundamentals, I've got very high conviction in the trades. So I kind of, we know what we're doing basically. So we know it's trace to take, and you just just gives you an idea, you know. Not ma not not a massive amount of losers in a row, really. Quite consistent. Basically, you can see. And if we look at just last month, just give you an idea. There's last there's the whole of last month's trades. This month's trade so far. Again, you can see I've only had maybe a couple of a couple of small losers in there. 
So I'm not, I, I'm mainly using my experience. To, I do use technicals to a degree. I'd say it's kind of 20% technicals, 80% fundamental. Um, but not, I'm, I'm more looking for, um, if the price moves against me and there's no reason for it, I'll hold the position because I'm confident in the trade. Uh, Manoj, good question, very good question. Surely the market has factored in the New Zealand dollar rate hike prior to the news release. Why would price then go up? That's actually a myth. Um, markets price, you know, markets being perfectly priced is a myth. The one who says that doesn't trade, basically. They don't, they don't trade. We, we trade all the time, all the time on events that have been already factored in. Like that example I just gave you on the pound. So if we're bullish the pound, the pound will rally. But then profit taking, traders will get out of their positions, technical traders will be selling it for some unknown reason. That will push the price down, and then we get back in, we go long again, because it gives us a good price. Think of, the tra think of trading like uh, buying a car. Imagine if you went into the showroom, and you saw a car for £50,000, very expensive, can't afford it, and you went back every week because you like the look of it, just to have a look. And then one week you went there, and the price was all of a sudden priced at £5,000. You'd buy it, right? You'd buy it. Same with a house. You snap it up because nothing's changed. It's still a beautiful, nice car. It's the price has changed. That's how I, that's how we trade currencies. That's how professionals trade currencies. You're looking at the value, looking at the fundamentals, what what gave it that value, and then you're trading it. So for the New Zealand dollar, the value on that thing was is way past 86, and I got in at 84. If you look at the high of 2013 when they started talking about hiking rates, it got to 86, I think, um, and then. It, in the meantime, it went all the way back down to open one. So there's plenty of chances to buy at a nice, good price. So that's the, that's the answer to that. Yeah, cash. I don't use indicators. I'm just using the fundamentals to tell me which one I'm trading and when and why. Yeah, I mean, Thomas, it's a good setup. That pullback strategy is a good setup. The test and retest, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with technical strategy. Like, I'm not saying that you shouldn't use technical strategy. You know, if you, but the way I view it is, if I know it's going up, what's the point in waiting for the system to give me an entry? I'll just get in. I just want to be in. Because what about if I don't get an entry? What about if it doesn't pull back? It just seems silly to me to miss a move just because a technical strategy didn't give me a setup. But by all means, I'm not saying that they don't work, of course. Yeah, okay, I've, I've answered that. I look at tech, I do use technical analysis to a degree. Dallas, yeah. I mean, again, I'm not really interested. If, if, if I've got to choose between following the fundamentals or the technicals, I'll follow the fundamentals every time. That's just my view. Um, Kian, well, again, it's a very difficult one. My, my stop losses will be just be like, I'll put a stop loss in kind of like in case the world ends, you know, in case World War Three kicks off and the market's just dump. Uh, I'll just put like a 200 pip stop. I mean, in that scenario, you're probably not going to get filled anyway, so it's a bit pointless. But I, I don't really like to have a, a tight stop because the market does move, you know, it does wick around. Uh, but like we just said, if I know it's going up, regardless of if it's just dropped 50 pips, it will recover. Um, and as long as I've got conviction, I can hold it. Um, so I'll, I'll just use all technical levels. So here is an example. So New Zealand dollar, this New Zealand dollar trade. Um, daily chart, I've got a long on the New Zealand at the moment. There's the high. This is the 2013 high when they first started talking about rates. Okay, so it's 85.40. So when they hike the rate, and you can see all the drop off down, this is just a great, this is giving us great prices to get back in. And then when they actually hike the rate, obviously in good time the market starts rallying because everyone knows a hike's coming. Look, it comes again. I got in around here, and look, it went. But, um, I use my stop loss and my targets are based on these levels. So, for example, 86 is a high level. I would have took it off at 86. I anticipate it getting higher, but I use old highs and lows, basically, the stops. Okay, Mr. C, what is the main news? How can I tell this news turns Aussie to the bull? Because, well, in that particular, I mean, you have to kind of have an understanding. This is what, obviously, we go through this every day in the room, you know, we, we kind of go into a lot more detail. But to, to give it you in a nutshell, the RBA, the Reserve Bank of Australia, 
change their tone. They, they release a policy statement and they change their tone from um, neutral, so sorry, from bearish, from dovish to neutral, which is positive. So they basically start by focusing on inflation, which, of course, if you're going to try and battle inflation, you have to eventually lower rates. And, of course, if you're going to raise rates, the currency goes up. So traders are always trying to bet what's going to happen in the future. Um, and once they've said that, they can't go back. They can't go, oh, actually, we're not going to change focus on inflation anymore. We're only going to focus on um, growth. They can't do that. They look like idiots. So from that point on, we were looking to buy the other. That's just a, that's a very, obviously, very shorthand explanation. Uh, Ray, what are the best days and times to trade? Again, if you read the news, you can pick your times and days to trade. Okay? You can pick it because you pick out the news events that we're trying to trade. So you'll think, you know, oh, we've got a, you'll read the news and you'll think, okay, on the 12th of March, the RBNZ are going to raise rates. That's what I'm going to trade. Around then I want to get in. That's when I'm, that's when I'm going to trade. So you can do it like that. So you just let the market tell you, basically. Jota, Euro, why is Euro dollar tricky to trade in your view? Um, the Euro dollar tricky to trade because fundamentally it should be going down, but from a set, the market sentiment is long because it's going up. It won't stop going down. The reason it won't go down is because the market won't sell it until the ECB actually do something. So they want QE, basically. They want the ECB to do QE just like the US have, just like Japan has. And until they do QE, the market's not interested in selling it off. So I am bearish on the euro, but I'm buying it, if that makes sense. Until the ECB act, I'm not going to get caught into selling it because, you know, of, since November, if you look at the chart since November, the euro has just gone up and up and up. So that's my viewpoint on it, basically. That's why it's tricky. It's just a mixed one. Um, I did buy it back, actually, after uh, the, the dollar sell-off, uh, which I'm holding at the moment. Uh, uh, but no, I didn't trade the last NFP. Uh, did I trade the last NFP? Uh, no, I don't think I did. I didn't trade NFP, no, sorry. Boy, okay. I, I, I generally don't, very often don't trade NFP because NFP is one of those things that's um, a little bit, it is a bit tricky to predict NFP. Mason, do you think news trading is suitable for beginner traders? If you've got the right guidance, yeah. Because it's just trading. This is how, this is what trading is. Um, you know, if you're waiting for a MACD and you know, a, you know, moving average to cross over, that's simpler to understand, but you're probably not going to make profit with it. So would you let, would you think that's a good, you know, I don't know. I think from a beginner's, we, in fact, I've got a student, one of our junior traders, he started trading in December. He, he opened a MetaTrader account so he could put him on my book. And since December, He's made it almost, almost, not quite, he's made almost 3,000 pips trading like this. He's having a great time. And he's just a complete beginner. So, yes, basically. I'd say, why not? If he can do it, anyone can. Um, and, and, you know, the good thing about that, all my books, everyone can see him. Fantastic. Um, I, I don't trade, good question, Thomas. How do I work out my trade time? I don't use leverage. So what that means is, um, if I've got 100,000 in my account, I'll only trade one standard lot. And if I've got 200,000, I'll trade two standard lots and so on. That's just to keep it simple for me. Very occasionally I'll use leverage, but then I'll use a stop loss. So if I think I can get away with a 50 pip stop loss, I'll load the boat. I'll use a, you know, I'll risk like one or two percent. If, if I generally, very often the market spikes around, so it's difficult. But there are times when I think, you know, I can get over even a 30 pick stop off here and then I'll load the boat, but only when I'm really confident. Uh, Chan, I, I, do I trade gold on the news? I'll, if I was trading any market, I'd trade it on the news. Stocks, gold, commodities. All I trade is FX, but I could theoretically trade any market because all the markets move the same. You can apply this to any market. Okay, take profits, Mr. C, are just old highs and lows. Manoj, do you find it difficult to get filled at the right price when trading a larger lot price of your fund? Um, not really. You get slipped, but maybe two to five pips at the most. Um, and, of course, if you're getting in a couple of days before the event, it doesn't matter because I'm already in the market. And I've got a big wide stops. So not, I don't have too much problem with that because I'm not trading that much. You know, I'm not trading... Billions. I'm not, I'm not that big. I know. In fact, I'm, in the hedge fund world, I'm probably really small. But you know, you can trade millions without really moving the market that much. 
Uh, AWS, okay, how much is the minimum, okay, for, from a managed account, £250,000 is the minimum investment for that one. Uh, Dalesh, dollar yen, well, dollar yen, I'm bullish on dollar yen, because of the fundamentals. The, big, the Bank of Japan are easing, printing money, that weakens the yen, and the, the, the Fed have obviously just said they're going to raise rates sooner, so that's bullish. Kian, again, trailing stop, I'm not saying it doesn't work, I don't use it so I can't really comment, but theoretically, nothing wrong with it. The only thing I'd say is just be careful, because the market does spike around, it's very difficult to try and, you know, be so tight with your stops, it's just tricky. Um, but yeah, try it by all means, I, I've got nothing against it, let's say. Um, FX Boyke, no indicators in ordinary trading, no. I chose the fundamentals. So if I've, get, if I've read the news, I've, got, I've absorbed the data, I've got a good feeling about a level, and it's pulled back into an old level of support or resistance, I'll just be getting in. I don't need in. If you know it's going up, you don't need an indicator. That's my view. Um, pound yen. Again, I'm bullish on the pound yen. The problem with the yen is it's a safe haven currency. So when things kick off like Ukraine, they buy the yen. So that makes the pairs like dollar yen and pound yen fall. But that's only temporary because the fundamentals are bullish. But you have to be careful because when risk events come, that's what drives those pairs down. Um, and you can kind of get into some drawdown if you're not careful. Manoj, have you ever tried intraday scalping for 20 pips per trade? Yeah, 10 for 10 I used to do. I used to trade 10 pips, risk 10 pips, take profit. Um, and it was good until I started trading big five and I got into slippage. So I was getting two pips slips either side. So in the end, instead of risking 10, I was risking 14. And instead of taking 10, I was taking six. So it just wasn't, I couldn't do it in the end. So this is why I trade a bit more far out. Dalesh, how far can Dolly go? I think it'll get back up to 105 within the next three months, for sure. I think you can get to 110 by the end of the year. As long as nothing fundamental changes, of course. AWS, what's your view of Dollar CAD? Very, 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 very bullish. I'm buying that pair. If it pulls back, I'm buying it. Every time it pulls back, I'm getting in. Ridiculous. It's the best pair to trade at the moment. So don't, don't buy at the highs. Wait for it to pull back into the 110s, the 111s. You know, nice little buying zones. Snap it up. These levels here. See where the market bought, bought from? If the price falls back down to there, that's the buying zone. Buy it back. You know? This level down here. If the price falls back down to there, buy it back. You can also use double zero levels. Like 1,200 would be a decent one. 1,100. 1,150. The 50s and double zero, they're decent levels as well. Uh, but bullish. If each time it pulls back, I'll be buying that pair. Uh, Euro CAD, again, is, Euro currency is a tricky one. So I'd sell the CAD against strong currency. So sell the CAD against the pound, sell the CAD against the New Zealand dollar, sell the CAD against the US dollar. So buy those pairs, basically. Euro CAD, you know, don't, don't get involved with that one. So that, which, I mean, I'm not saying it won't go up or down, it's just a bit more tricky. Uh, Manoj, my strongest, most confident fundamental bias at the moment is long New Zealand dollar, short CAD. And if, that's my most strong bias. But bear in mind, guys, this changes weekly. So this time next week, you know, the central bank's going to come out and said something, and it's completely changed the view. Okay, but at the moment, that's what I'm doing. Okay, guys. Has anyone got any other questions? Uh, sorry, in terms of the fiber, the euro dollar, I think I, I, I think they'll start buying it back. Actually, um, Thomas, an actual. Oh, an, an actual example of the next news. Um, what have we got? What have we got coming up? Um, let me have a quick look at the calendar here. The FOMC was basically the last, the last big one I was looking at. Uh, let me just have a quick glance at the calendar for next week. Uh, what we do is we obviously go in the room. Obviously, we post these reports and we, we give the um, 
the upcoming events that we're all trading. And I also send the trades out via text message as well. So every time I take a trade, I send a text out so everyone can follow me if they want. Um, but the point of the service really is to help them do, help you guys do it for yourself because it is simple. Um, uh, Radoslav, would you please tell us how you got from being a self taught trader to your current state? Um, a lot of time, a lot of practice, a lot of trading the wrong, completely the wrong way. Switching from strategy to strategy, focusing too much on technical analysis, trying to find a system. Um, that's how I did it. In the end, I, um, in fact, in the end, what happened was I met one of my friends. Had it was kind of uh, she was going out with a with a with a stocks trader. This is met a few years ago now. Uh, it was right at the beginning, and I was really getting frustrated. And I met him and. I was just talking to him and trying to figure out how he moved. And the revelation hit me when he didn't know what a price chart was. He had no idea what a price chart was. Um, he was trading fundamentals. And something clicked and I was like, okay, well, this, he's trading, you know, half a million of his own money. And he just, that's all he does. He must be doing something right. And since then, I never look back. Now, obviously, I do use technicals. And I think that actually makes me, gives me an edge. But literally, as I said before, 10, 20% technicals. It's all about the fundamentals, because if you follow the fundamentals, you know which way each currency should be moving, and then you just trade it. It's really simple. Um, Darryl, is it possible the Bank of England will raise rates at the end of the year? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think probably 2015 for that. Uh, T-Chan, yeah, I'll, I'll try and do some webinars when I can, of course. Manoj, recommended broker for a relatively modest retail account. Um, I think our pari are quite good. Our pari are quite big. I mean, whatever you're going to do, you're going to have quite big spreads, like two or three pips on euro dollar. But our pari are okay. Um, Duke's copy. I like. I really like Duke's copy, but they're also there in Switzerland. Um, and I'd, yeah, I'd say our pari. You know, I've never. I traded with them years ago, but yeah, I'll, I'll try and do some more webinars, guys. Ray, how long did it take me to become good at reading a chart? A long time. Maybe, well, I mean, I think this is all a combination of like, you know, I've been doing it seven or eight years now, I so suppose, 2006. I'd say, you know, it's, reading a chart's not that common. If, you, if you're taught that you how to do it, it wouldn't take you that long, maybe two or three months. Like, say, for example, if you were sat next to me or following me in some way, I think after three months, you'd, well, Ryan, the guy I'm talking about, he's, he's a young guy, he's on Marsex book, He's six months, and he's smashing out of the park. And, you know, he literally had no trading experience before this. Dalesh, I'll try. The only problem with doing a webinar of the news announcers is because I do those to my members, so I can't do two at once. Um, obviously, those guys are paying, so it's, if, if I can, yes. I'm not, I've got no objection to doing a live webinar for that. Yes, Radoslav, I did trade crazy, yeah. I used a lot of leverage. I was quite lucky in my first couple of years. Um, you know, if you look at my returns, and they're posted online, you can see them. In the first few years, I've used quite a lot of leverage. I did make a lot of returns. I, you know, that was a bad thing because I think if I kept doing that till now, I probably would have blown up. I, you know, I was a fairly, fairly lucky in the sense that I uh, took a lot of risk and paid off. But at the heart of it, obviously, the trading had to be good as well. Okay, Martin, yeah, Martin suggesting FX Pro UK. Okay, cool. What did I do before trading? <laughs> you wouldn't believe it if I told you. I used to be a window cleaner. <laughs> That's actually true. Um, Cash, do I trade the news with the London Post strategy? No, I don't, no, I don't trade the London Post. I don't know what that is. I don't trade the London Post. It's a, it's, a, it's a technical strategy. I'm not. I don't look at those. I, I just, like I say, if I know which way the price is going to go, I'll just buy it. Um, Manoj, does the chart and method? No, because I don't. I don't really use charts. You know, I literally use charts just to give me a visual of which where the market's been buying or selling from. So empty force. You don't need to pay for charts, in my opinion. What if you're trading like me anyway? Uh, which market's having more impact on the news? 
Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by that question. Um, Jota, mm, no. I don't, I don't put, I really know, I don't bother putting in a spreadsheet, I just trade. Um, I, I would say I'm probably, well, I mean, you could get an idea just, if you're actually recording back, I went through the accounts. Um, you, I'd probably maybe win, seven, I'd say 70% of my trade, maybe. Sometimes 80. Something like that, I don't know. Don't take that as gospel, but. Okay, Manosh, how many trades do you take a month? Uh, between 20 and 40. I'll take. On average. Between 20 and 40 trades a month. I'm taking. Some months less, some months more. Uh, Mr. C, again, that's very, I'm very, very discretionary. So, for example, let's go back into my trade. I'll show you an example. Uh, these trades here. You see this trade here? Pound dollar. And then the bond beneath it, pound CAD. So I bought, because this is a technical setup, I'm, I'm bullish pound dollar, I'm bullish CAD. You see, I bought this at 11.45. Uh, I've, been, I've been buying CAD for a while, for, for months, in fact. Right. I bought the pound dollar, I bought the pound CAD. Pound dollar rabbit, I took some profits on it, you can see, made some nice pips. Then I thought to myself, you know what, I don't want to be losing, I don't want to be going into negative territory on like that. So I moved it to, hang on, hold on a minute, this one here, sorry, no, sorry. Not those two, these two up here. Sorry. The pound dollar trade. Took the trade, made some nice pips, then I decided I didn't want to loot, take a loss, so I just put the dollar cap to break even. Uh, you know, two, it was like a half a pip or whatever it was for the commission, whatever it was. So it was basically break even. So in that scenario, for example, I moved it to break even. But very often I won't. You know, some trades I won't even bother moving it to break even. It's very discretion. I, once you get into this zone of trading, it's very, very simple, and you'll get a feel for the market, and you'll, be, you'll know which ones to hold and which ones not. Uh, Boyke, did you say also, yeah, 50s and round numbers are good levels to trade from, definitely. If you've got a bullish pair, and you're buying it up on the 50s and round numbers, you, you, won't, you won't go far wrong. Thomas, since the BOJ does quantitative easing, quantitative easing, and the trend is up on all yen pairs, is there a possibility it could decline further? Well, the, the yen pairs are a safe haven play, you see. That's another thing about news trading. I mean, I could stand here, I could sit here all day teaching you about the news. Um, so when something bad happens in the world, like the Ukraine thing, the market will buy yen. But the fundamentals suggest to sell yen. So I'm selling yen. Um, but if you're not careful, you can get caught in those moves and you end up 300 picks down holding a position, you know, for two months while it recovers. Um, I expect all the pairs, to, the pound yen and the dollar yen, to rally back to their recent highs. Look at the four-hour chart on both those pairs. The high that we've hit in the last three or four months, I expect those highs to be hit again, to put it simply. Boyke, I do trade crosses, yes. Uh, you know, look at New Zealand dollar CAD. Um, that's a perfect cross pair to trade at the moment. You see, I've got my levels marked up. I've got my buying zones marked. There's another one down here. Um, okay, basically they all, all okay, I see. Right, which markets have the most impact on news? Um, they all, it's all the same. The news moves the, all, all the markets. The entire financial world is moved by news. That's what, that's what people fail to understand. So if I to get into it's, not, it's the same, basically. So it's not more or less. There's not one impacting more than another. Uh, it's just different news. So, for example, for, for we've looked at New Zealand dollar. The New Zealand are going to wreck high rates. That's going to impact the New Zealand dollar as a currency. So FX. It's not going to have any impact on the bond markets. Other things will affect the bond markets, like more like geopolitical events or economic, you know, economic performance of a country, whether or not they'll default. And again, those things won't really affect FX. So, so you can see. It's, the news have an equal impact, but just different types of news In fact, different types of markets. And all you do to get that is just read the news. Follow the three steps that we've given you. Uh, play it out. Try it. Watch it. Take a look. Read the news. Just try it for a month. I think you'll be impressed. And of course, if you want to learn, you can 
join us at the service, uh, directdavis.com, uh, and check out a little bit more about, you know, and trade with me, basically. If you want to trade with me, there, there it is, trade with me. If not, take what you've learned today, and hopefully you can make some tips anyway. Okay, guys, hopefully, I think that's pretty much the end of the questions. Yeah, that's the right link, Thomas. <clears throat> Keep reading that every day. After about a month, you'll be in tune with the market. Okay, guys, thank you very much. I'm going to leave it there. I'll stop sharing my screen now. Cheers, guys.